Hey guys, um, so you'll notice in the video uh, that I'm actually dubbing over everything that I'm saying in the uh, actual video, and that is because the audio was terrible out there. Um, we don't have any kind of professional mic set up, so we're just, if, if I didn't overdub this, you wouldn't be able to understand anything I'm saying out there. We've got, as you can probably see, we have airplanes in the background because we're right next to an airport. We have trucks going by and the wind blowing and all that sort of stuff. So just really terrible audio. Um, but basically, this video is uh, going to show you, or it's it, the, the purpose of the video is to demonstrate the difference between the kinds of reads or the read heights that you're going to get when you place your mats on concrete versus when you place them on something like um, grass or some area that is not affected uh, by the or is not negatively impacted by the, the rebar that's inside of most concrete. So um, so that's basically what I'm going to show you here, okay? So I've got two tags. These are the two tags that we use most commonly, the bib tag um, and the shoe tag. And um, these are the ones that we get the most questions about, and that's why I'm using them. But, um, but basically, I'm just going to start off with the shoe tag, and I'm just going to kind of go through um, showing you where the tag is should be read and and where it is actually being read when I'm doing it on the various surfaces. So I'm going to start off here, as you can see, on the grass, and then I'm going to move to the concrete later, and we're going to see exactly uh, what kind of a difference we have. Okay. So like I said, shoe tag um, should be read. I'm I'm about five eleven, um, and it should be read on you know basically at waist height for me, um, but that's about a meter off the ground. Okay. So even though you can't hear it because I've cut out that part of the audio, I am actually getting tag reads at uh, at about a meter high. Okay, and that's a good tag read height for for shoe tags because uh, the whole goal of, of shoe tags obviously is to um, have the the tag close enough to the ground that you know when you're when you're running over the mat, you're not going to be missed um, no matter what. Now the shoe is in, or excuse me, the tag is in the parallel orientation to the mat, so you can see that I'm standing over the middle of the mat. I'm not going to be getting reads on the outside of the mat. Um, I'm going to be getting reads on, you know, sort of towards the center. If I move far enough down, I can get some reads, but primarily the area that that the field is going to be covering is on the inside of that mat when I'm using shoe tags. Okay, um, so basically. The whole point of this is just to do, to show you that unless you are you know a giant or something like that, there's really not going to be any way for you to get missed, um, you know, provided all of your equipment is working right and you're running it on grass. There's really not any way you're going to get missed. Okay, you would have to you would basically have to high jump over this thing. Okay, so uh, so yeah, that's pretty much how the shoe tag works and. Um, and then we'll go ahead and we'll move over on to our bib tags and show you how those work. All right, so uh, now we've got our bib tag, and you notice that the orientation that I'm holding it in is different, obviously, than the shoe tag because the shoe tag is going to be placed on your shoe, so it's going to be more parallel to the ground um, than the bib tag, which is going to be worn on your chest. Now, um, as I was pointing out earlier, the the area where the shoe tag reads is on the inside of the mat. This is actually pretty much the opposite for the bib tags. Okay, um, ideally, you want to be able to get tag reads all the way up to here. Okay, where where you see my hand. Um, now, bear in mind that I have a single mat here, so I wasn't actually getting tag reads um, all the way up to that height. Um, I'm five eleven, so it works well on my chest. And I was able to get tag reads, you know, basically just above my head. Okay, um, but again, you know, that's that's five foot eleven off the ground above my head. So you know, you're talking about somebody whose chest is at at, at a height of six feet off the ground. That's going to be a very tall person, um, and that's again with one mat. We always recommend that you do use two mats instead of one. Um, but this is not a bad read height. Okay. Uh, a bad read height is is what I'll show you later. Um, if if basically anything below my chest is going to be considered a bad read height. If you if you're having trouble 
getting reads anything below my chest, um, then that's a problem. So you, right there is basically the, the maximum height that I'm able to read uh, in this in this condition, okay? Now if I had had a second mat laid out, basically what it's gonna do is it's going to, uh, it's going to increase, it's gonna basically create a, what's called constructive interference between the two mats, um, the two mat signals. It's gonna create constructive interference in between them and it's gonna create a uh, higher, uh, I'm gonna get a better read height off of it in between those two mats, okay? So we, we generally, we're gonna keep those about a meter apart if we do have those, but, um, but yeah, that's basically, that's basically what I'm trying to describe here. Okay, so uh, now we're, uh, we're back with um, the mat on the pavement. And literally all I've done is move the mat from the, uh, from the grass over to the pavement. I haven't moved the, the reader or anything else. Um, so I did that just because I wanted to show that uh, just moving the mat by itself is enough to have <clears throat> a really significant negative impact. And if you remember, I've got my shoe tag now, and if you remember, uh, it was reading with no problem at my hip height, and right now it's got no reads at all. Okay, still no reads. Still no reads. And just there, just there is where I finally start to pick up reads, okay? And all I have done is move this onto the pavement. So you can see that that's a really significant drop in read height, uh, which means that this pavement probably has quite a bit of uh, rebar mesh underneath there that um, is reinforcing it, which is great for the pavement and it's great for driving, but it's really, really horrible uh, when you're trying to collect tag reads. So um, this just r really, I think, helps to um, iterate my point about having the mat on on pavement. Now, um, there are a couple things that you can do. You can um, add an additional mat, which is something that we always recommend, and you can get some additional height out of that, but it's really not going to help with your height too much um, on the shoe tags. That's primarily for the bib tags that that's going to help. But the second thing that you can do is that you can add something to get the mat off the pavement because it's directly on the pavement and that's that's really where the problem is so if we can get that up off the pavement a little bit uh, that will help and so what we've done in the past is to go out and get things like wooden excuse me pallets and stick them under there and then you'll ha you know build a small ramp or something like that and the runners can can you know get up on there um, but but really, outside of that, there's there's not much option for you if uh, if you if you're running it on pavement, um, you're just going to end up with a really really low read height. All right, and same thing, and you know, with with the with the bib tags here, okay. And again, you remember that I was getting it red on my chest as opposed to, um, you know, way up above me. But uh, I, I was actually able to get a minimum read height. Uh, just above my head. Now right here, this is where I finally get a read height on this, okay? It's, it's just about where my waist is, which means that you would have to be a really, really short person um, to have your chest way down there. You know, you'd basically have to be a kid uh, in order to get a good read on this. And, and that's the maximum read height that I'm getting, you know? So that's really, really terrible. Um, you know, and it's just, it's, it's not really feasible to have something like that. Now, bear in mind that obviously every, every road is going to be a little bit different. Um, this is a relatively new um, set of pavement, or I don't know what you would call it, but it's a, it's a relatively new parking lot, so it probably has a little bit more rebar um, than maybe some older stuff, but regardless, um, you're going to have to basically gauge that yourself, um, and that's why we recommend before every single race that you're doing your testing to uh, to basically ensure that you have a good read height. Because if you can't get it on your chest, um, if you're like an average height person, uh, then that's that's just really not that's not going to do any good for you or for your your runners. You're not gonna you're gonna run the risk of missing people, um, and and you're gonna have problems with that. So. 
the best solution is to, if you have the option, um, move the mat. You know, if you can get it to where it is on on a you know a, a, a dirt path or on grass or something like that, um, away from any electronics and things like that, then that's great. If you don't have that option, then really your only the only thing that you can do to to basically increase your read height is to go out um, and like I said, you're going to have to sort of build yourself a little platform um, with with some sort of you know wooden pallets or something like that. Um, um, some of the I'm actually going to spend some time here uh, pointing out some of the things that you want to avoid um, or you know that you want to make sure of when you're setting up your your um, your mats. You want to make sure that number one, um, you are keeping your mats like environment wise. You want to keep your mats sort of away from um, any major power sources. So any power lines that are overhead, anything like that. Um, if you're using generators, you want to make sure that you uh, keep them as far away from the mats and the reader as possible. If you can avoid it, like we really recommend that you don't use a power, a direct power supply with the reader um, during the race. Um, you would have to have, for the light reader here, you would actually have to have a special um, adapter cable in order to do that anyway. But uh, if you had that set up, we recommend really that you use a battery instead because uh, you can introduce a lot of noise into the system and, and it can really lower your read height that way as well. Um, the other thing is if you are going to use a battery, like one of the external batteries, that's great, but we don't recommend using car batteries. I've had people use car batteries and they come back and they say, hey, this doesn't work. Well, that's because car batteries are not meant for long-term use. Um, they're meant to start up an engine, and then you've got the alternator that kicks in behind that and basically recharges it. So you don't have, um, it's not meant for, for long-term use. So don't, don't anticipate on getting a good run out of a car battery. What you're looking for is um, a deep cycle battery. It needs to be 12 volts and it should be sealed lead acid which basically just means that it's a non-spillable um, type battery it's sealed um, so that if somebody or you know if something happened and it got kicked over for whatever reason it's not going to spill all over the place and it's not going to cause problems um, and then you'll probably see that it'll be either an AGM or a gel type battery um, so just look, be on the lookout for those sorts of things when you are um, looking for an external battery, and then you're just going to use those external battery clips that come with your um, with your reader, and uh, you'll just connect it up. Make sure that you're connecting it up before the race begins, and then um, you should be good. Now, uh, a word or a point about the amount of time that you're going to get out of a battery, uh, you need to look at the amp hour rating on there. The amp hours are going to give you um, sort of a, a base of how long you'll 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 get out of the battery. So if it says 20 amp hours, the light reader, for instance, uses about four amps per hour. So you can just divide by four, um, and that'll give you about five hours of battery life. Okay. So just whatever whatever the amp hours will say, you know, 20 AH or 50 AH, whatever it is, just divide by four, and that's going to give you uh, a good base. Okay. Well, I hope this has been uh, really informative for you guys, and uh, we'll check you later. Thanks.